super big change is when I come in and touch him. And again, I mentioned before that I only really touch him when he's in a mentally soft place, but that this can be jiggly. I know it sounds funny, but this area will inflate huge and you'll see all this area filled in when there's tension throughout the body. So when he's soft and he's wiggly, you can see the whole thing kind of moving gently. That's when I'm touching him because that's when it will have value to him versus touching him when in, he's in a tight defensive mental state carrying physical tension. Another place for observation when the horse is soft, irrelevant of how much shape they're in, is when you're scratching back here by the rear and that there's some give to the muscle and it doesn't feel like it's rock hard. Even horses who are highly conditioned, there will be a softness when they're not carrying physical tension. So many horses I meet are defensive about their face being touched, even though human halter them all the time. So when I put my hand on here, I'm kind of cupping my hand between my thumb and my index finger on the bridge of his nose, not down here in the soft pockets. And I go to rock him. He often shows a defensiveness in trying to get his head away. So I'm just kind of vibrating my fingers on the left side or his right side. I'm like, and they can tip his head. And as I draw back with my thumb, that he can tip his head. The whole going up is a defensiveness. So when there's a brace or tension, I'm kind of rocking him, waiting till he lets down and is softer. I can feel him clenching his jaw, his neck, his shoulders, his hindquarters, just from what I'm rocking in here. And again, I'm not pushing hard. I'm not asking him to yield. I want him to follow the feel of the pressure without feeling like he has to flee. Because if he's defensive towards my hand creating pressure, you can imagine if we put the halter on, and then if we put the bridle on, what it feels like. It's also a good spot to watch how often he can turn his head, but his eyes are looking elsewhere. So I'm vibrating my thumb a little bit. There, he changed the thought, and then he had to get all the way away. He's still avoiding. I'm gonna step in here. Now he's trying to go to the ground. He's just trying out different options and I'm not creating any pressure other than keeping my hand here, letting him have a different experience. This isn't out of challenging him or making him tolerate, but if a horse is defensive about you touching him and you're planning on riding him, then some things have been missed. So we need to fill in these holes. What I'm looking for is the moment he can offer a soft feeling and then I will release my hand. Here it's coming. Right there as he's softer, the eyes are blinking, eye is changing, there's a pause, and I move my hand, and I'm going to give him a full release facially. And he says, no, but wait, I think I can try more. Now, he also has a habit of imposing, so understanding that he can be here without having to push on me. If you notice, when I create a boundary, then he says, I'm out which is the honest feedback. So we're watching, can he check in and let it go? When we call his thought back over. So even if we had different ideas, we are looking that he can let go of having to flee and avoid. So if you notice with the obstacle, he had to make a decision to be able to go around it or go over it, which he did, and then he offered to come over much softer. This is all part of the search, engaging the brain. It's not about making his body yield. I didn't move all over. I didn't chase him all over. It's about helping horses learn how to think. Right on cue, Ringo.